Welcome back. Now we're going to do a problem. Uh, I'm calling it alpha particle head-on collision with nucleus. So the question says, what is the minimum distance of approach of an alpha particle with kinetic energy 0 0.40 mega electron volts if it's going to come head-on collision with a stationary lead nucleus and a stationary free lithium-7 nucleus? So we're going to see that these two questions are a bit different and we're going to try to understand what their differences is. This problem is a good uh, problem involves application of uh, the physics three concepts of uh, involving electrical potential energy, kinetic energy. It also includes stuff from physics one about momentum and collisions and energy conservations. And it's also got a, a lot of good uh, modern physics concepts because the Rutherford's experiments uh, involving the alpha particle shooting it at a gold foil is how we understood the nature of the atom. So it involves a lot of good modern physics electricity and also uh, mechanics concepts. So in the first case, we have a stationary lead nucleus. So what we mean is that it is stationary and it will stay stationary. So it is kind of confined to the atom. So the nucleus, when it gets, bound, uh, when it gets bumped by the alpha particle, the nucleus will still stay pretty much standing, okay? So it, it will be standing, whereas in the second case, we have a free lithium-7 nucleus. It is not bound to the atom. So after the, the alpha particle comes, it's going to give a bump to the lithium-7 nucleus, and the lithium-7 nucleus will also project forward, right? So in the first case we have here, we've got a particle charge Q, right? It's coming. This is the alpha particle, alpha particle. And remember from the um, modern physics, we learned about the alpha particle. This is the nucleus of the helium atom. So the charge of it is it has two protons and two neutrons. So the charge of it is equal to the charge of two protons. So we can say uh, Q equals two proton charge, right? So it's going to come with a certain V initial. And then we got here the lead nucleus, PB nucleus. That one is uh, equal to... Uh, it has an atomic number of 79, so its charge is going to be uh, 79E, uh, right? E plus. So 79, because it has 79 protons. So it's going to pretty much stand still. So what's going to come? What's going to happen? This is going to uh, come, and it's going to eventually stop, right? And uh, at the end, its uh, momentum is zero, and its kinetic energy is zero. So V final is zero, right? And then it come, bounces back. It's kind of like when I throw a ball against the board, the ball comes, hits the board, and then eventually bounces back, right? So there's a dis distance of minimum approach is what we want to find. What is the minimum distance of approach here? D, okay? So we're going to conserve kinetic and potential energy. So we're going to say the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy is the final kinetic energy plus plus the final potential energy. The initial potential energy is zero because initially the, the alpha particle is not bound to the uh, lead nucleus, right? So there is no initial potential energy. So then we have here initial kinetic energy. The final kinetic energy is zero. So then we have here KQ1, Q2 over D. That's the final potential energy, the electrical potential energy between the alpha particle and the lead nucleus. So it's pretty much just a uh, matter of solving for D. So we say D is equal to K Q1 Q2 over kinetic energy. So in this case, the kinetic energy is already given to us, but it's given to us in units of mega electron volts. So then we just convert that to joules and then we're pretty much set. So then we put here D 9 times 10 to the 9th that we put the charge of the alpha particle, which is twice the charge of the proton. So two times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Then we put the charge of the lead nucleus, 79, times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay, then we put the kinetic energy. So that's uh, 0 0.4 times 10 to the sixth, right? Because it's mega electron volts. And then we, you say one electron volt is, this is uh, electron volts, one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, right? So the electron volt, the electron volt cancel, and uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 cancels one of these, 
right? So then you end up just getting uh, one of the charges uh, of the uh, proton that we have to calculate, okay? So then you get here D is equal to um, nine, uh, two times nine is gonna be 18. Okay, then you're gonna have 1.6. Okay, then you're gonna have here 79. Okay, then you're gonna do 10 to the 9th, 10 to the minus 19, that's 10 to the minus 10th. 10 to the minus 10th divided by, then you have here on the bottom, 0.4 and 10 to the 6th. 0.4, 10 to the 6th. So when, when you calculate 10 to the minus 10 over 10 to the 6th, that's gonna be 10 to the minus 16, okay? So then you're gonna calculate all of these and then multiply it by 10 to the minus 16, okay? When you do that, you get, okay, so, uh, sorry, the atomic number of lead was 82, 82. I was looking at a, a different problem, so you gotta make sure you look at the correct one. So the, uh, the charge of the lead nucleus is 82, so we have to put here 82, okay? So when you do this calculation, you're gonna get, um, okay? And uh, usually for things that are this small, we would uh, record this as picometer. Uh, D is equal to 0.59 picometer, okay? So is that pretty close? Oh yeah, that's pretty close. But remember that the distance of the, the average size of the nucleus is roughly of the, of the order of uh, femtometer, 10 to the minus 15. So even though the alpha particle uh, got really close, it still did not penetrate into the nucleus. So it, was, it came like this and it turned around and the nucleus we can draw like this. So the distance from here to here we found out is 0.59 picometers, right? But the, uh, the typical size of the radius of a nucleus is 10 to the minus 15 to 10 to the minus 14 meters, okay? So it's about uh, order of magnitude 10 to 100 smaller, okay? So this is gonna be roughly something like this to scale. So the alpha particle is in no way in danger of penetrating right into the nucleus of the lead atom, okay? Unless we were to really uh, have a much larger kinetic energy, we could kind of force it in into the nucleus and then there could be some kind of nuclear reaction that could be caused. But for now, 0.59 picometer is quite a distance away from the nucleus of the lead uh, atom, okay? Now, what would happen in the second case? We have a lithium nucleus, and then so this one has mass M2, this one we can say has mass M1. So then what's gonna happen? Initially, this one is stationary, this one is gonna slow down, slow down, but this is gonna start picking up speed, right? The, the lithium atom, is gonna start picking up speed. As this slows down, this picks up speed, right? So then what's the distance of closest approach? Okay, the distance of closest approach occurs when the, this one has slowed down, this one has picked up speed, when their final velocity is the same. So at some point, like right here, right? The final velocity, M2, and this is gonna be M1, this is final velocity, same final velocity, okay? So it's kind of interesting because you might think the distance of closest approach occurs when the initial alpha particle has stopped, but no, it has, uh, it's gonna be going at the same velocity, that's the distance of closest approach. What's gonna happen after that? Then this is gonna start speeding up some more, right? It's gonna start speeding up some more, we'll call it the final prime, the double prime, and then this one is gonna start slowing down the final prime. So this one is gonna be faster, moving faster than that. That means their separation is gonna start getting wider and wider. So their distance of closest approach is when they have the same uh, final velocity, right? So then now we can conserve the momentum of the system and the kinetic energy and potential energy of the system, right? So we can say the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum of the system. So we can say M1 V initial is equal to M1 V final plus 
M to be final. Okay, so pretty much it acts like an inelastic collision. It's almost like a physics one problem where something comes, attaches itself to another object, and they move together. But here the attachment is only very temporary, right? Only split second. It almost act, acts as if they're attached. After that, this one starts moving faster, faster. This one slows down and then finally stops, and then it turns around, right? <coughs> so then, uh, we're going to say here, M1 V initial is equal to M1 plus M2 V final, and then V final is equal to M1 V initial over M1 plus M2, okay? So then we're going to do the energy equation. How do we do that one now? Okay, so then we're going to say the initial kinetic energy here, right, is going to equal to the final kinetic energy of both of them, right? Kinetic energy of the first object, the kinetic energy of the second one, plus the potential energy that they have, right? So then the initial kinetic energy, uh, half m v initial squared, then the uh, final uh, kinetic energy of this one, half m1 v final squared plus half m2 uh, v final squared, right? So then since they have the same final velocity, then we have here k, q1, q2 over d, okay? So then how can we uh, simplify that? Okay, so then we're gonna do here half m1 v initial squared. We can uh, factor out the half m1 plus m2, and then we have here v final squared, right? And then we can substitute this v final, right, into that v final. Then we're gonna square that. So we're gonna have here M1 V initial over M1 plus M2, okay, squared plus K Q1 Q2 over D, okay? So then uh, we're gonna be squaring this. So we have here half M1 V initial squared is equal to half. Then we have here M1 plus M2 on the bottom, we have M1 plus M2 squared, right? And then we have here M1 squared V initial squared plus K Q1 Q2 over D, right? And then one of these cancels. This one cancels with this one. And then what I can do is I can say half one of the M1s, I can separate it out. So I can say half M1 V initial squared is the initial kinetic energy. So in this problem, since everything, the kinetic energy is already given, everything is in terms of energy, I would just like to leave it as kinetic energy initial, right? Then we have here half M1 V initial squared, that's gonna be the kinetic energy initial. But then we have an extra M1, so we'll leave that as M1 over M1 plus M2 plus K Q1 Q2 over D, right? Then we can take that and put it with this, right? Combine it with that, okay? So then we have here kinetic energy initial, one minus M1 over M1 plus M2 is equal to K Q1 Q2 over D, right? Then combine these and then you get your kinetic energy initial, M1 plus M2 minus M1, that's M2 over M1 plus M2, equals k q1 q2 over d. So we get a similar looking equation to what we had here for the distance of closest approach. d is equal to k q1 q2 over uh, kinetic energy initial. Then we have here m1 plus m2 goes to the top, okay, over m2, okay? So you see it's a modified form of this equation. This equation worked when? work when the nucleus is bound to the atom and it almost acts like a wall. So it almost acts like an infinite mass, right? So what would be the limit of this equation as M2 goes to infinity, okay? So if this one acts as if it's a wall, what's gonna happen? It's gonna act like this is much bigger than that, right? So when you add M2 plus M1, it's gonna be insignificant and it's gonna equal M2. And then M2 and M2 is gonna cancel so then this equation becomes this equation when M2 is much larger than M1 and acts as if uh, it is a wall, right? But 
when it's free to move, when the nucleus is free to move, it's not bound, then uh, it acts, uh, it, you know, it's going to start moving itself also. Okay. okay, so now we put in all the numbers, right? So we have here 9 times 10 to the 9th. The charge of the alpha particle is 2 protons, right? So it's 2 times the charge of the proton. Okay, the lithium atom, it is atomic number 3. It's got 3 protons in there and 4 neutrons. So the atomic weight is 7. That's why it said lithium 7, right? Uh, so, but the, it has 3 protons, so we put here 3 times the charge of the proton, right, divided by the kinetic energy, so we do the same thing, 0.4 times 10 to the 6th, then we put here 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, okay? So then we multiply it by the masses. The mass of the incoming alpha particle is atomic mass units is 4, 2 protons, 2 neutrons, right, so 4, and then the lithium is 7. So we put here 7 over 7, it has 3 protons and 4 neutrons, okay? So then we multiply all of that out. This one will cancel this one, right? 0, 3, 4 picometers, okay? So the distance of approach, closest approach is a lot smaller. The other one was uh, 0.59 picometers, so this is closer. It's still not enough to penetrate uh, the nucleus because this is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 14 right whereas the the size of the nucleus is 10 to the minus 15 meters so it's about 10 times you get within 10 times the distance of the size of the nucleus so it's going to look something like this this is going to go like that and then the nucleus of the lithium is like that and then you get within a sphere about 10 times the size of the nucleus at that instant the alpha particle and the lithium nucleus are moving at the same velocity, right? So they're both moving like that. You get within 10 times the size of the nucleus. After that, the alpha particle starts slowing down, and then the lithium starts speeding up, and then eventually the alpha particle is going to return back, okay? So you can see here a good problem that involves quite a bit of stuff, conservation of energies, the stuff from physics one, from mechanics. This, some of the stuff is from modern physics concepts and also from electricity and magnetism section. So it's a good combined problem, okay? Thank you very much.